Our story today took place in the country of Zambia. And this is a true story. It took place just about uh, eight years ago. And it took place when there was a project to build a school. Now, in many parts of Africa and in many parts of the world, there are places where there's lots and lots of little kids. And little kids need to learn things, right? Because it takes you need, you need smart stuff in your brain in order to, to do really big things for God, right? You know how to do math and how to read and how to write. Those are important things, aren't they? But you know, in lots of parts of the world, they don't have enough schools for those, for those little kids. And so the kids, they might get a little bit of, of schooling from a friend or a, a teacher if they know, or a parent if they know a few words, but then they don't get to learn very much else. Well, there's a project, it's really cool, and it's called A School in a Day. And they basically will be able to build an entire school in one day. Now, here's how they do it. They have a big plant, a manufacturing plant, like a factory that's located in Minnesota. And they get a gigantic, gigantic spool of steel. They get this big piece of metal that's all rolled up in a big, big coil. And they deliver it there. And then the, all the workers in the factory, in the manufacturing plant, they take it and they use big, strong tools to straighten out that big coil of metal. And they flatten it and they hammer it down. And then they use big cutting devices to cut big pieces of it. And then they use other devices to punch holes in it and to fold little edges. And what they're doing is they're making the biggest Legos you've ever seen. You guys ever seen a Lego? Yeah, yeah you know what Legos are, right? Well, what they're making is like Legos, but with metal. With huge pieces that can be put together to make a school. So they take all these different pieces, they might cut out one little wall over here, one door over here, a piece of a wall over here, a piece of a roof over here, and they, put, they cut them all up, they make all the pieces they need, and then they stack them all together and they put them into a big, big shipping container. Not a little cardboard box like something comes to your house from Amazon. A big metal shipping container. It's strong, it's heavy, it's so big that it takes a crane to lift it off the ground and move it to another part. So if they're going to transport it on a truck, they have to have a crane lift it and put it on the back of a truck. The truck takes that and it takes it to a boat and the boat takes that and it takes it across the ocean. And this particular one that we are thinking of today, this particular big, big shipping container came across the ocean. America would be, if this is where South Africa is, America would be like over here and it sailed all the way across and it landed in South Africa. And when it got to South Africa, every big, big container that arrives in South Africa is inspected. In any country, if, you, if a shipping container comes, there's people called customs officials and they open up the big container and they look inside to make sure that it has what it says it has and there's nothing hidden inside that would be bad. Like maybe somebody's trying to send some drugs in the box or, or send some people in the box. Like may, maybe they kidnap somebody and they're sending them somewhere. So they check to make sure there's nothing bad or, or, or nothing that shouldn't be in the box. Well, when this box arrived, the customs officials opened it up and when they opened it on the inside of the door was a big long list of all the things that are put in the box. They do this at the manufacturing plant. They write down 15 pieces of metal for wall, 15 pieces of metal for ceiling, 15 pieces, and they have all the pieces. And not only the big, big Lego pieces, the big metal Lego, but they have all the tools they sent along too. Two hammers, one generator, 13 uh, electrical welders. They have everything in there. They even have all the tiny pieces. They say, we have 1,000 nuts and 1,000 bolts. And they have all the information that you need so that you can know exactly what's in that container. So when it arrived in South Africa, the customs officials opened up the box, looked inside, saw the list, uh-huh, that looks about right. They, they didn't really count everything. They, they don't want to check every tiny little piece, but they just looked around, they moved some of the metal pieces. Yep, everything looks right in here. They sealed it up, then they got it, a crane that put it onto the back of a truck, and the truck drove from South Africa all the way up through Botswana until it arrived in Zambia. And in Zambia, the box was taken over to the part of this particular town where they had been planning to build this school. And all the people were so excited the day the box came. I mean, have you been excited when you get a big box on Christmas? If you get a really big, big box to open, isn't that so exciting? It almost doesn't matter what's inside. Just the fact that there's a huge box to open is just so exciting. In fact, sometimes it's almost as if the box could be empty. It doesn't matter if it has anything in it as long as you've got a big box to play with. Aren't boxes fun? Well, this big box arrived, and as it came into the town, people started telling everybody, the box is here, the school that we're gonna build, it came, the box with the school in it is here, we're gonna build it, let's go check it out. And people came running to see what was gonna happen. And the box, the, 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 the big um, 
uh, trailer truck pulled up to the area where they were going to build a school and had a little crane mounted on the back and it grabbed the, the big shipping container, took it off, set it on the ground, and then the truck drove away. And the people came running up and the people and the, the leaders who were in charge of the construction said, all right, everybody, give us some room. We've got to make sure that we've got everything we need. So let's open up the box, but I don't want everybody just jumping in there and grabbing things. Okay, we'll do this in an organized way. So they opened up the door. And what was written on the inside of the door? All the things that they had. Yes, a list of everything that was inside the box that had been sent all the way from Minnesota, many thousands of miles away. Minnesota is not very close to Africa. So they opened it up and the leader said, okay, I want one person to stand right here. And as the other people pull things out of the big shipping container, you mark it off with a big marker. If it's here, you put a check mark next to it, okay? And so they started working and they needed lots and lots of people to help. Can you imagine if you were making a Lego the size of an actual school building? You'd take a lot of pieces, wouldn't you? Well, they took a lot of metal pieces. They were bigger and they were heavy. You need a lot of people to carry these big, heavy pieces. So there were people getting to get it, lift up one sheet. Okay, let's go. And as they came out, they'd say, one sheet of wall. And the person would put a mark down. Okay, well, it says 15 sheets of wall. I'm going to put one check mark. And when we're, when we're all done, I'll have 15 check marks for all the wall pieces. And you do that for all the wall pieces, for the roof pieces, for the doors, for the windows. They had windows they would send along, special made kind of glass that doesn't break that you could use to put into the window frames of the, of the walls. They came out carrying the, the, the special glass. They came out carrying boxes that had hammers and saws and welders and generators. They even pulled out a couple of big boxes that had bolts. Do you guys know what a bolt is? Here's what a bolt is, just to show you, for those of you who might not know. All right, I've got this in my hand and this in my hand. Which of these, which of these is a bolt? Oh, Connor got it right. Down. These are the bolts. And then these little things are called nuts. These are not like peanuts or, or almonds or walnuts. These are metal nuts. And they go onto the bolt like this. Just kind of screw them on like that, see? So when they had sent all the bolts, they had all the windows. Each window was going to take four bolts in the corners. And after you would put the bolt in, then you would also put on two nuts. You'd put one actually on the, before you put the bolt through the hole, you would put one here, and then you'd slide it through the hole, and then you'd put the other nut on, and then this space would hold the glass attached to the, to the uh, uh, bolt. that kept it from slipping off either direction. So if you needed two bolts, excuse me, two nuts for every bolt, and they sent 500 bolts, how many nuts were they gonna need? Any idea? Very good guess. It was close. It was 1,000. They had 500 bolts. They were going to need two for each bolt, two nuts for each 1, bolt. 000. So they needed 1,000. 1,000. So they got the bags out that said bolts. And this bag said 500 bolts. And the guy on the door, by the door said, okay, 500 bolts. And then they went and kept dragging things out, dragging things out until it was all empty. And they said, we're all done. And they had pieces scattered. Not scattered. They laid them out carefully. But they laid out all over where they were going to be building. And everybody was just standing around looking around so excited. This is so great. We can't wait. This is going to be so awesome. We're going to have a real school, real walls, real doors, real windows, which is important. Because if you don't have doors and windows, then animals could get in. Then you could have maybe even somebody climb in in the night that wants to like steal the books from the school or take something from the school or damage the school. So it was important that they had all the doors and the windows working properly. And the man by the door said, well, you're not done yet. And they said, what do you mean we're not done? We got everything out of the container. He said, that can't be right. There's one thing we haven't checked off here yet. And they said, uh oh, what is it? He said, it says 1,000 nuts. And were they talking about peanuts or walnuts? No, they were talking about these little metal nuts that needed to go on the 500 bolts, right? They were gonna need those to hold the windows up. If you didn't have the nuts, then you could slide the bolt into the hole of the window, but the window would just be hanging there. And all it would take is a little wind to come and vroom, the window would fall out of, uh, off the bolt and fall on the ground. That wouldn't be any good. And if they were just hanging there, a thief would come along and just shake the glass, pull it off the bolt and get inside. Is that any good? That's no good. The leader in charge said, what? That, we must have just missed it. Let's check carefully. He went inside the shipping container. No, the shipping container was totally empty. He said, everybody look around. Look for, look for a box or a bag that says nuts on it. Everybody started looking and looking, and they didn't find it. There were no nuts in the shipping container. Everything else on that long list was there, but no nuts. All right. Now, if you're making a project, 
at your house, maybe your dad's working in the garage, or maybe you're building a birdhouse, or whatever you're doing, and it turns out that you're missing a part that you need. Where would you go to get the parts that you need? Store. Okay, what kind of store? Can you think of any names? Stores that have like lots of tools um, and pieces? Menards. Menards, yep, yeah, yeah, you know, okay. Anybody else? Any other stores that would sell things like that? Would you find that maybe like Home Depot? Yeah, yeah, or a hardware store is what you're looking for, right? Well, do you think that they have a Home Depot in Botswana? Mm -mm. No. Do they have a Home Depot in Zambia? No. no. Do they have a Home Depot in South Africa? They don't have very many hardware stores, especially in little towns. The people started thinking, well, what are we going to do? The closest that, that these nuts must be are, must be in Minnesota. We can't get them today or tomorrow. It would take weeks or months for them to get here. And we need to build this school now. Maybe we could find a different way. And people started thinking, maybe we could come up with a substitute. No, it has to, has to be strong. And, and it has to be made out of metal. It has to fit these bolts. And that's the other thing. Even if you just had any other nut, like maybe from another piece of metal somewhere that has a bolt and a nut in it, you can't just take any nut and fit it on to any bolt. It has to be the right size. The hole in the middle has to be the right size of the bolt to fit through. Oh, what are we going to do? And the leader came up to one of the men there and he said, listen, we've got to try to find some solution here. So there is a small hardware store uh, in, in a town about two hours away. Could you go there, take one of the bolts with you so that they can measure and see if they've got any nuts that would fit? We, we need a thousand nuts. And the man looked at him and said, I'll try. And the leader said, I know it sounds crazy. We'll be praying hard, but... We got to try. Please go. So the man took his bolt and he put it in his pocket. And I don't know if he walked or if he rode a car, took a bus or a taxi, but he went driving, driving to the town where the hardware store was. And he went inside and there were a few men standing around and there was a couple workers and he said to one of the workers, excuse me, I need to talk to whoever is the most experienced worker you have here. And they said, oh, that would be the old guy. And sure enough, this old man came out from the back of the store, kind of hobbling out. And he was walking slowly. He said, yes, how can I help you? And the man said, okay, here's the story. And he told him the story of how they were going to build a school. And the man said, oh, yeah, I heard about that. You're going to build a school in one day? I don't think you guys could build it in five weeks. It would take too long to build a school. You can't do it in one day. He said, well, we're sure going to try. We have all the parts we need already except one part. And the old man kind of got a happy look in his eye because he thought, oh, they're here to buy something from me. This is great. I'll make some money. And he said, what do you need? What do you need? I'll help you. And he said, we need 1,000 nuts. And the man said, ah, uh, that's going to be kind of difficult. I don't really keep a lot of nuts just sitting around here in my hardware store. We're kind of far out from the big, big cities. People don't usually need that many nuts. Well, what kind of nuts do you need anyways? He said, I need ones that would fit a number 12 size standard bolt. And the old man started to shake his head. He said, no, no, I know I don't have that. And the, and the man who had brought the bolt said, well, how do you know that you don't have the right nuts for this bolt? He said, because you said it's a standard bolt. Here's the problem. In America, they use one way of measurements to make their bolts. In the rest of the world, they use a different way to make their bolts called metric. You want standard, that's for an American bolt. I don't have any standard bolts. All I've got is metric bolts and nuts here. So there's no way I can help you. And as the old man was talking to him, as the old man was talking, other people were hearing the problem and coming around and they were listening and they started chiming in. Oh yeah, standard bolts? You won't find any of those around here. No, we use metric. Are you from that school project? There's no way you'll build a school that fast. Well, I heard they can build a school pretty fast. And they were talking, 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 talking. And the man was standing there with his bolt thinking, what am I going to do? And then he just felt something kind of nudging him in the back of the head. He had a thought. And it was probably the Holy Spirit. And he said, would you mind just checking in your back room where you store stuff? and check and see if you might have a thousand standard nuts that would fit a number 12 standard bolt. And everybody started to laugh. <laughs> what do you think this is? You're not, they're not gonna find that here. We're just in a little town in the middle of, 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 of Zambia. There's nothing here that you're gonna find that fits an American type bolt. The old man looked at the man carrying the bolt and he said, all right, I'll go look. 
So he shuffled off into the back. And as he went into the back, all the other men were just kind of chuckling themselves and nudging each other, saying, there's no way. And the old man stayed in the back for a while. And he stayed in the back for a while. And he stayed in the back for a while. And the, the other people said, we might as well give up. This is ridiculous. But then the old man started coming out. And he had something tucked under his arm. And he said, I want to tell you a story. And he set the box down. And everybody's eyes were on the box. You know, when I first started working here, I was only about 15 or 16 years old. And there was a farmer. He had moved here from another country. And so he had tools that only worked with standard bolts, not with metric bolts. He was working on a project, and to use the tools that he had, he needed standard bolts. So he came and he asked us to order him 1,200 bolts. Now, just, to, just a quick reminder. Bolts are these, right? Do they have the bolts already? They have the bolts already for the school project, right? What they need are the nuts. So the man standing there with the bolt in his hand thought, why is he telling me this story? So he needed 1,200 bolts. And they had to be standard. So we sent off an order and had to go all the way to America. And the supplier there sent a message back and said, we can send you 1,200 bolts. We will only send it to you if you buy the nuts that go with it too. And so then I told the farmer, I said, well, you're wanting to just buy the bolts. You don't need the nuts. And the man had said, no, I only want the bolts. And I told him, well, that company in America will only send it if we'll buy the bolts and the nuts. And the farmer said, that's all right, send it anyways. So I sent the order back, and the, country, the, the American uh, manufacturer, they got the bolts ready, they sent them to us, it took a long time. When it finally arrived, we had two boxes show up, one box full of bolts and one box full of nuts. And I told the farmer, he, his order was here, he came in, he looked at the bolts, he said, that's perfect, those are the bolts I need, I'm gonna buy those. And I said to him, well, but the nuts come with them, you have to buy the nuts too. And the farmer told me, nope, I'm only buying the bolts. And he gave me money for the bolts and he left the nuts and he went back. And you know what we did with that other box? That box that had nuts? Well, I hadn't remembered until just this moment, but we took that box of nuts and we put it in the storeroom and back on a shelf. And other boxes got put on top of it over the years. And other bags got put next to it. And it collected dust and spider webs grew all over it. We had no reason to use it because nobody uses standard size nuts in our country. I'd forgotten it was there because you know, that was 60 years ago that order came in. But now when I was in the back looking around because you told me to go look, suddenly my eyes saw this box and I remembered, hey, I've got 1,200 standard nuts. Now here's the thing I don't quite remember, said the man. I'm not sure whether in this box, the nuts that are in here are number 12 size or not. I know they're standard. You want number 12. I don't remember if they're number 12. Give me your bolt and we'll see. And the man who had been standing there with the bolt in his hand, he handed the bolt over and all the other people who had been laughing and giggling before all stood around. They all kind of held their breath without even knowing it. Just wanting to see what happened. Do you think the bolt is going to fit the nut? Could it possibly be that these nuts that were ordered 60 years ago by somebody totally unrelated to this church project, somebody who was just needing the nuts, uh, the bolts and didn't want the nuts, do you think they could possibly be the right size? The old man took the bolt and he took the nut out of the box and he put it on and he wiggled and everybody watched and then he started spinning his fingers. Because what do you know? They were number 12 nuts to fit a number 12 standard bolt. And how many of them were there? Were there a thousand? How many were there? Two thousand. There was more than a thousand. There was 1,200. They had extra nuts. Oh my goodness, everybody couldn't believe it. They were just so amazed. And the man who had come to buy the nuts said, thank you so much for checking. I want to buy them from you. And he paid the man for the nuts. He grabbed the box. He traveled back. He gave the box to the man in charge of the project. And the man's eyes got big. He said, what's in there? He said, 1,200 nuts fitting a standard number 12 bolt, sir. 
And everyone from the project who had been there to, to build the school that day gather on, and they were so grateful. They dropped to their knees. They were just praising God, so happy. And they started thinking to themselves, how is that possible? The angels must have been planning 60 years ago for this project. They sent a farmer to get standard nuts, excuse me, standard bolts, and they made him not need the nuts, only want the bolts. And then they made the, the old man put it in a box in the corner and forget it was there for 60 years until today when he went to look for it. And that's when everybody realized, we don't need to be worrying about anything, do we? We don't need to worry about anything, where food's going to come from, who's going to take care of us today, what's the weather going to be like, are my mom and dad going to be happy, am I going to do a good job in school? You don't have to worry about any of those things. Jesus is watching out for all of those things, isn't he? Wow. That story really helps me to feel at peace, to not worry about things. If Jesus can plan 60 years in advance, for the missing nuts for a project to build a school for children to learn about him, well, then I don't need to worry about anything, whether it's what's, what's going to happen tomorrow or an hour from now or a week from now. Jesus has that all figured out too. Isn't that a wonderful story? Let's bow our heads and pray real quick for the missionaries. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the project that has built that school in Zambia and as well, in all, as well as many other schools. We pray for the people who have been learning there, the little children who have grown up being able to hear about you in those schools. We ask that you will watch over them and that you will help them to have the same reassurance and peace that we have. And that is to know that you are in charge of everything. You've got it all, all planned out. That you make plans way in advance before we even know what, we'll, what we will need. Help us to trust you and to live happily day by day with that faith. We love you. Amen.